Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. We're taking a little walk and having a little talk today because, well, first of all, we're walking through the mud because Chelsea have signed the mud. We've put Arsenal in the mud and Shakhtar Donetsk are going to be absolutely delighted with the fact that they have managed to make 100 million euros from Chelsea Football Club for the signature of a 22-year-old winger who has played 77 competitive games in his professional career, scored nine goals in four years. Now, we're going to remove all of the negative, sarcastic sentiment that we've just thrown out there with what I just said, and we're going to talk about the positives of this deal, because now that Mudrick, I'm literally just walking through the jungle here, now that Mudrick is a Chelsea player, it is our job to back this transfer. It's our job to back this signing, but before we go into the positives, I want to discuss a little bit about how this has gone down. So obviously, Arsenal have been bidding for Mudrick. Mudrick? Arsenal have been putting in the bids, Arsenal have been putting in the work. And in the process of doing that, Mudrick has come out and he's made it pretty clear that Arsenal were the club that he wished to sign for. By the way, that is Mount Bator. And I think it still goes down, it's classified as an active volcano, which is super, super cool. Arsenal were the preferred choice. Chelsea were kind of quietly going about our business with this deal, which I think is a good thing. But I think also at the same time, when this kind of thing happens, the fact that he's come out and he said Arsenal is the club he wants to sign for. I don't think he specifically said that Arsenal's the club he wants to sign for, but words to that effect and through various different posts, likes on Instagram and all that stuff, it became quite obvious that Arsenal was where he wanted to go. Chelsea have obviously gone in there and the sheer flexing of the financial muscle here from Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital is kind of scary in a way. Another thing about this deal that people need to know because a lot of people are jumping in the gun looking at the 100 million euro fee thinking, blimey, how are Chelsea going to manage to maintain adhering to FFP standards and regulations as a result of this kind of deal? As far as I'm aware, only 25 million euros of this 100 million euro fee will be put forward during this financial fair play period of time. So I think Chelsea have managed to deal with Shakhtar Donetsk here in a very, very good way to not only get the player and give Shakhtar overall the value of money that they wanted for the player, but by also being smart in FFP terms to be able to m like measure different amounts during different years and different transfer windows so that we can stay within those regulations. Because a lot of what people are saying right now is that Chelsea didn't really need to spend 100 million on this player. I'm not going to lie to you, because of the stats that I mentioned at the beginning of this video when we first started walking, I do find it absolutely mad that we can spend 100 million euros on a player who hasn't really played that many games. His goal scoring record isn't that, that great, to be honest, I'm not going to lie. However, he is a very exciting player. I think he's that kind of explosive, edge of your seat, off your seat moment kind of player from what I've seen of him in the Champions League for Shakhtar this season. And if you look at the highlight reels, because let's be honest, were you watching the Ukrainian League that closely? Were you watching every single game that he played while he was at Shakhtar Donetsk? Highly doubt the majority of you were. I certainly wasn't, but of course I've seen them in the Champions League. And difficult team to beat, and he was one of the star players, if not the star player in recent times. So I think Chelsea have got a, an exciting prospect on our hands here, which that to me is a problem because when we're talking about prospects, you could still categorize Christian Pulisic as a prospect. You could still categorize Callum Hudson-Odoi as a prospect. What's gonna happen to Callum now that we've signed Mudrick? What's gonna happen to Raheem Sterling, who we've only just gone and spent 56 million pounds on? Are Chelsea gonna be trying to offload Raheem Sterling? That is some of the stories that we're hearing since this Mudrick deal has developed, obviously if you saw my video last night, I basically made it within one minute of Fabrizio Romano making the news or breaking the news. And I think my video was probably the first one out other than his video on YouTube. But obviously since then, Chelsea have agreed the terms. It looks as though all that we have got to, to wait for now is a medical. That medical might be happening right now, even though it's match day. 
and the player is expected to be at Stamford Bridge for today's game against Crystal Palace. So at one stage or another yesterday, we're looking at this thinking Chelsea are trying to hijack the deal. Chelsea are trying to hijack the deal so that Arsenal have to spend more money. Turns out it wasn't the case. And it's also being reported that this is the player that Graham Potter wanted. And I think of all of the questions that we've had this week, of all of the conversations I've had here on the channel, all of the comments that you guys have been posting, if you wanted Thomas Tuchel to... Thomas Tuchel, there you go, I've gone and done it again. If you wanted Graham Potter to be sacked, I think what this proves, if it really is a player that Potter wants, Graham Potter isn't going anywhere. And instead of just sitting back and let results continue to capitulate, Todd Bowley is looking at this and thinking, well, we don't want to just let this season sail down the river and then we look at what we've got come the end of it and we just hope it isn't as bad as it looks like it's falling into right now. We want to fix this immediately. And we want you, Mr. Graham Potter, to get the players that you want in this team. And we want you to pick these players and then obviously not pick the players that you've been picking who clearly can't put in a performance and get results on the field. So I think there will be some losers from this sign-in. I don't think Chelsea are going to be bringing him in for 100 million euro total as a prospect that we're just gonna give a few minutes to here and there and then hope that he can shine and then break through and become a regular. He's gonna be a regular, let's be honest. I think this tells me a lot about the future for Mason Mount. He is not gonna be guaranteed places anymore. Zhao Felix is gonna be probably the main man through the middle. And then come the summer, Christopher Nkunku, he's also gonna be there too. So we're gonna have Nkunku if we go for Zhao Felix, which apparently Chelsea do want to sign him on a permanent come the end of this season, that front three is a completely different front three to anything we could have imagined simply a month ago. Nkunku, Felix, and now Mudrick as well. It is pretty incredible that Todd Bowley has managed to pull this one off. I think in a way, it shows the strength of the financial power Chelsea have. It shows our ability to go under the radar on things and then at the very last second jump in and steal players from other clubs. I just really hope that this whole he wanted to be at Arsenal thing isn't going to come back and bite Chelsea in the backside. We have managed to beat Arsenal to the signing of two of their targets in this window. You could say tactically smart business from us to try and prevent them from going even further ahead of us in the way that obviously they're multiple points ahead of us right now. They are 10 positions ahead of us in the Premier League table also right now. But I also think that Chelsea, now that we have got this signing done, I think we should get excited. This player has got the potential to be an absolute game changer. I think in terms of signings that get you off of your seat, from what I've seen of Mudrick so far, there is different elements that remind me a little bit of Eden Hazard. His ability to just run and take players on, I think, is something that Chelsea have absolutely drastically needed now for quite some time. Shall I start walking back in the other direction? Look how beautiful this all is behind me, by the way. I think it might be a bit too dark. So we're just going to keep walking down there. I actually cannot believe Chelsea have managed to get this one done. I really, really can't. 100 million euros is an astronomical sum of money. He's probably going to be first choice for the left wing. I don't think Graham Potter will be too pleased with what he's seen so far from Raheem Sterling. I don't think the numbers that Sterling has turned over so far at Chelsea have been good enough to warrant him being a guaranteed continuation in the starting eleven for Graham Potter. I really don't. I think maybe Chelsea will look to offload him this summer. But if we finish on this deal now, welcome to Chelsea. Mikhailo Mudrik. The next story of the day is it looks as though Jorginho is set to leave. The Athletic have been reporting that Georgie is on the way out. The question that I have for you guys in the comments down below, you guys have been amazing recently with the comments, by the way. I want to know, do you think that signing Mudrick right now is going to put a dent in any possibility or probability that Chelsea will be able to go out and splash on a central midfielder this January? Because I think if Jorginho is leaving, as it is now being heavily reported this summer, he's counting down the days until he goes. If this is the case, then surely, between now and the end of the season, we're not going to be looking to fully rely on Jorginho, are we? Because if he knows he's leaving, 
and he doesn't want to be here anymore and he doesn't want to sign a new deal because I think Chelsea have been trying to get Jorginho to sign a new deal the same way that we have with N'Golo Kante. If he's not going to be here, are we going to get the level of performances that we know he's capable of, not that he's done it too consistently over the years that he's been at Chelsea? Is it going to happen? I'm not sure it will do. So are we going to go back in Frenzo Fernandez? That is a massive question that I don't know the answer to right now. There is a lot of reports that we probably won't be able to, but with the signing and the FFP, the fact 25 million is going through now is good. It does mean that we still have funds available. So let me know your thoughts on the Mikhailo Mudrik signing in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching this video. I've been posting so many videos and you guys have been absolutely blowing the support away. So I want to say a massive thank you for that. Six things we learned could be difficult tonight because I am staying in the middle of butt F nowhere right now. I bought a little light with me to try and do six things we learned immediately after the Palace game. But if I don't manage to do it, then it will have to be out tomorrow because I'm staying in some kind of glamping place with the missus tonight. So yeah, be watching the game on the laptop. Hopefully we get three points. I pray that we do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you are new. Come on, you blues.